this is Herman Brooks. Herman is just like the rest of us. Every day, he has to make all kinds of decisions. Like what to wear, whom to date, and when to panic. Now, these decisions should be easy. But if you take a look inside Herman's head, you'll see why he sometimes has trouble making up his mind. I'm Herman's intellect. Without me, he couldn't hold his job, pay his rent, or tie his shoes. I'm Herman's sensitivity. Without me, he wouldn't feel tenderness, honesty, or love. The good things in life. Oh, I'm Herman's anxiety, and I keep him out of trouble. And believe me, there's trouble everywhere. I'm Herman's lust. Without me, he'd miss out on all the good stuff. You know, fun, food, babes. Sometimes they agree. Usually they don't. But this struggle is going on inside all of us. And it's all going on inside Herman's head. That racquetball's a lot of fun. Yeah, and that woman had some backhand. Yeah, yeah, how's your face? Oh, the swelling's gone down. <laughs> Have you thought about getting a maid? You're really starting to let this place go. Jay, I couldn't leave a place like this. Somebody broke in here. I've been robbed. Quick, call the police. Let's not panic. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh I my said God. not panic. Sorry, I misunderstood the instructions. <laughs> Everything, my phone, my clock, my toaster, my... My potatoes. <laughs> you took my potatoes, Jay. I had three potatoes right there. I was saving those potatoes. I just bought a tub of sour cream and chives. Bad news, Hermo. <laughs> oh, not the sour cream, Jay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's scum! All right, take it easy. It's just sour cream. Oh, Jay, it's more than just the sour cream. It's the chives. Look at the bright side. You can pad the insurance claim. I don't have insurance, Jay. Look what they did to my apartment. Someone is going to pay for this. I think it's going to be you, Herm. Ooh, quite a fashion statement, Herman. Not today, Hetty. My apartment was robbed last night. Oh. oh. Yeah, they took everything. My stereo, my typewriter. They even took my clothes. I feel so violated. I know exactly what you mean. Last night a man took me out to dinner and suggested we split the check. I felt so dirty. Honey, <laughs> I could have walked in on them and been killed. I'll understand if you want to take the day off. Oh, thank you, sir. Hetty. <laughs> appreciate that, sir, but right now I think work will take my mind off things. Fine. You finished that article on origami? I'm sorry, sir. I took it home to work on it and the burglar stole it. So right now, there are armed men running around New York with advanced knowledge of paper folding. <laughs> that can't be good. Sherman. Herman. Whatever. I came as soon as I heard you'd been robbed. How did you hear that? One of these people is a mole. <laughs> Crawford, what can we do for you? Do you realize New York is filled with crazed, psychotic criminals hopped up on Mary Jane? <laughs> You don't have to tell me. That's why I have this stun gun. Oh, 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 would I love to see that baby in action. <laughs> stun this man. <laughs> Crawford, really? It's okay. He's the mole. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, now, stun me. Crawford, is this really necessary? Stun me, damn it, I can take it. I think his parents spent enough quality time with him. <laughs> you, come here. Me? Yeah, you. Are you prepared for Armageddon? No, I still have a little more shopping to do. I am an armed assailant. What are you going to do? Huh? <laughs> that probably won't work. Here's a hundred bucks. Learn a martial art. Research. Herman, it's the police. I'll tell him he'll call him right back. Don't worry, son. You shot that man in self-defense. I didn't shoot anyone. What? Why not? <laughs> For one thing, I don't have a gun. 
Sherman, I can't believe you don't pack heat. Well, I've never needed heat in the past, except that one time I threw my back out, but that was a moist heat. That settles it. I'm taking you to a gun shop. He's right. We have to protect ourselves. We should buy a gun. We don't have to buy a gun. We can protect ourselves in other ways. Why don't we buy a dog? Because you don't have to follow a gun around Manhattan with a plastic bag. <laughs> Look, if we're going to buy anything, let's get a hooker. <laughs> It'll cost the same, and for an extra five bucks, she'll bark and roll over. <laughs> I guess there's no harm in looking. That's more like it. See you downstairs in ten minutes. Herman, I know you're angry, but a gun is not the answer. Mr. Bracken, I assure you, I'm just going to look. Besides, it'll keep Mr. Crawford happy. Herman, a shiny object would keep Mr. Crawford happy. <laughs> hey, Jim! Fred! Jay, thanks for coming. I really didn't want to be alone with Crawford. I know he's a little nutty. A little nutty. All right, he's out of his freaking mind. Yeah. <laughs> He's interested in guns, so you pretend you're interested in guns, too. It's a great way to get ahead. You just gotta be subtle, you know. Sherman here wants to buy a piece. And uh, Mr. Crawford, I'm still not sure how I feel about owning a gun. And I'm not sure how I feel about candy-ass crybabies. <laughs> you don't like them. <laughs> Show him something good, Fritz. I'm gonna go over here and browse. Okay, let me guess. Last night, someone broke into your apartment. They took your stereo, your TV, your clothes. Hey, Fritz, does this thing cut through bone? I'll five. <laughs> New York City, every day, 4,000 people are held up at gunpoint. And when the police say they can't do anything about it, you know what those poor suckers do? They come to me. You got me wrong. I'm just here to humor my boss. Sure you are. Let's start off with something small. How do you like the feel of that, baby? I like it. I like it a lot. Put that down. Don't you realize guns are just phallic symbols? You have anything bigger? Sure. Oh, good choice, Sherman. Wrap it up. Mr. Crawford, I'm still not sure if... Uh, Jim, I'm... you know, there is a waiting period. Oh, come on, Fred. Jim, I could lose my license. Well, I don't want Sherman to be without a gun. Well, it's, it's okay, Mr. Crawford. I know. Take mine. <laughs> thanks, thanks anyway, but I wouldn't want to leave you defenseless. No problem. <laughs> it's a very nice gun, Mr. Crawford. You mind if I uh, take a look at it? Well, all right. You ever handled it? Uh... <laughs> Give me that! <laughs> Here, Sherman. Mr. Crawford, I don't want your gun. You don't want to be unarmed when those burglars come back. And they always come back. Come back? I'm not sure I can handle it if they come back. Don't worry, little fella. I'll take care of you. <laughs> I think it's testosterone time. <laughs> I hate testosterone time. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. Are you prepared to use it? If I have to. If you're gonna pull a gun, be ready to use it. I will. I will. I'm not convinced. Jay! <laughs> Mr. Crawford, I'll use it. Can we please leave? Put that gun on my tab and send it to Sherman over at the magazine. Oh, Swiss Army knife. I can use one of those. I'll take this one. <laughs> We've all seen the place before. They did him a favor. <laughs> Makes you realize how vulnerable we all are. Glad I started that self-defense class today. You did? Yeah. Let me show you what I learned. Grab my throat. Hi-ya! 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 Herman, let go! You're choking me! <laughs> Herman, aren't you afraid to be here alone? No, not anymore. Now that I have little Herman here... <laughs> Is that a real gun? Yeah. I can't believe you own a gun. Can't believe you call it Little Herman. <laughs> so where are you going to keep it? I don't know. Maybe uh, in the desk drawer here? Well, suppose you're in bed and somebody breaks in through the front door, then you won't be able to get to it. Okay, then I'll keep it in the nightstand. Well, suppose you're working at your desk and they break in through the window. 
Gosh, you're right, Louise. I should have gotten five guns. She's trying to help, Herman. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, Louise. I'm on edge. You gonna be okay? I'll be fine. Sure, you will. Hey, thanks for coming with me and helping me shop. Sorry we couldn't find anything for you. No, oh, that's okay. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Exchange pleasantries, have a little sponge cake together, form a lifelong friendship, then we'll shoot the son of a bitch! <laughs> I didn't think he'd shoot. <laughs> Guess I was wrong. Nice grouping. What? Besides, I figured I could take a couple of bullets. <laughs> Do you hear birds? Oh, my God, we shot a man. But we didn't know it was Crawford. We thought it was a different lunatic. We were protecting ourselves. We did what we had to do. It was fight or flight. We have to get help. Help! Somebody help! Sherman. I ask you nicely the first time. <laughs> Mr. Crawford? Mr. Crawford, oh God, what have I done? Is this the little girl I <laughs> Sing with me, Sherman. Mr. Crawford, I just shot you. Sing with me, damn it, it's my dying request. You are not going to die. Is this the little boy at play? <laughs> I don't remember growing older. Harmonize, damn it. When did they? What's going on in here? Quiet. Can't you see we're singing? I shot Mr. Crawford, but it isn't my fault. I, he came in dressed as an intruder because he didn't think I was man enough to shoot. God love him. He didn't let me down. <laughs> Everybody, sing. Sunrise, sunset. Sunrise, sunset, swiftly light a year, one season following another. Laden with happiness and fears, sunrise, sunset, Sunrise, sunset, quickly close the day. Have you heard? Herman shot Mr. Crawford. I heard they had a duel over a woman. I heard Crawford caught Herman embezzling money. I am sick of these rumors that I've been hearing, and I want it to stop right now. Besides, I heard they bought a house together on Fire Island and couldn't agree on the color scheme. Man. Herman, what happened? Crawford broke into my apartment. Oh, you think a guy has all the money in the world? Well, he blew it on the ponies. No, Louise, he broke into my apartment because he didn't think I'd use the gun. I didn't know it was him, so I, I shot him. You mean Crawford is dead? No, no. Well, actually, he was dead for 15 seconds in my apartment. Can you believe it? Oh, that reminds me of the funniest joke. This guy walks into a bar with a pig under his arm, and the pig says, I'll have Rob Teddy, Roy. Teddy, what does this have to do with Mr. Crawford? Nothing. I was just trying to take the focus away from Herman. Are you going to be okay? Oh, I'll be fine. I was talking to her. He said, I almost killed a man with a 38 slug. If it had been the 44 Magnum he ordered for me, we'd be at a funeral. 
You want to take the day off, you go right ahead. Thank you, sir. Not you. I nearly killed a man, all because of that stupid gun. Research. Herman, it's Mr. Crawford. I'll put him on speaker. Mr. Crawford? Sherman. Sherman, is that you? Yes, Mr. Crawford. I just wanted to hear your voice. I'm here, Mr. Crawford. How are you? Oh. You in pain? Oklahoma, where the wind goes. We're murderers. Crawford cleared us. No one will be pressing charges. Is that all you care about? A human being is lying in this hospital bed because he cared more about our safety than his own. We're in a hospital? Let's see if we can get a nurse to shave us. <laughs> Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford, you can't die. Please, Mr. Crawford, please. Hey, excuse me, who are you? Don't tell him her name. A deranged family member may want revenge. Oh, what are the chances of Crawford having a deranged family member? <laughs> I'm Dave Smith. Nice to meet you. Hi, Herman. Uh, how's he doing, Herman? Who's Herman? That would be me. I just told you my name was Dave Smith because I didn't want you to know I shot Mr. Crawford. Oh, I thought Sherman shot him. I'm Sherman. I thought you were Herman. I am. But for some reason, Mr. Crawford calls me Sherman. In any event, I'm the man who shot him. Sherman. <laughs> I'm so happy to finally meet you. You know, we thought of you as the son he never had. Who are you? I'm the son he had. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Sherman. Hi. I'm Mrs. Crawford. Jimmy told me all about you. Really? Yes. He said you were a sissy girl and you didn't have the guts to shoot. I guess he was wrong. You, you look tired. Why don't you sit down? Grandma, get up. It's Sherman. Why are you people being so nice to me? I, I shot your father. Well, it was bound to happen. You know, he's pulled this stunt before. Oh, yeah. I put two bullets in him during a hunting trip. He put on a bear outfit and attacked my tent at two in the morning. And I thought my family was dysfunctional. I still somehow feel it's my fault. Hey, take it easy. An hour ago, he was singing Porgy and Bess. He's going to be fine. Herman. I came as soon as I heard. Listen, don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. Mr. Crawford's going to pull through. Ooh, this guy's dying. <laughs> it's not our fault. We bought a gun and shot a man. Well, what were we supposed to do? He broke in and attacked us. We cut down a man in the prime of his life. That's ridiculous. The man's 50 if he's a day. <laughs> Mr. Crawford might die, and we will have taken a human life. This is going to haunt us for the rest of our days. And no matter how hard we try, we will never be able to forget it. We will never be able to think of anything else. Man, Crawford's wife is stacked. Did he talk to the doctor? What did he say? He said these shoes look great on me. Did he say anything about Crawford? Oh, he said something about that, but then we started talking about my shoes again. <laughs> Excuse me. This man is critically ill. I need for you all to leave. That includes you, son. I'm sorry, doctor. I have to make peace with him. I'm the man who shot him. Oh, okay. Doctor, is he going to make it? I don't know, son. At his age, it's very hard to break into musical theater. <laughs> Mr. Crawford. It's me, Sherman. Can I get you anything? Are you thirsty? Can I... Turn up your drip. <laughs> oh, Mr. Crawford, I'm so sorry. This happened. The last thing I wanted was to shoot anyone. This is very hard for me, but I'm trying to speak to you truthfully from my heart. You 
stupid, depraved maniac. Yes, you had no right to do what you did. I didn't want that gun in now because of you. I'm going to feel guilty for the rest of my life. God, why'd you make me shoot you, you, you stupid bastard? Sherman, is that you? My name is Herman. Get it? Her... Oh my God, you're alive, you're alive. I heard your voice calling me, calling me back from the other side. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm here. <laughs> Mr. Crawford, thank God you're alive. I heard your voice, and I was nearly ready to let go. And it made me realize that life is worth living. Besides, I got investments. I came this close to taking your life, all because of that stupid gun. Have you been cleaning it? <laughs> Aren't you listening to me? I nearly killed you. I mean, so what? I got robbed. Big deal. I can buy new stuff, but I can't replace you. Sherman, are you coming on to me? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you I'm giving you back your gun. I never should have taken it from you in the first place. The fact is, I don't need a handgun, and I just do not want to live my life that way. Oh, you're absolutely right. You, you have learned a great deal, Sherman, but there's, there's one more lesson I must teach you. And what is that, Mr. Crawford? Disarm me. <laughs> ah, Thurman. Oh, I see you got the gun we sent over. Is there a problem? Yes, there is. I came this close to killing a man. Oh, no. I am so sorry. Let me adjust those sights for you. <laughs> you don't understand. I don't want this gun. Oh, you want another gun? No, I don't want another gun. I don't want any gun. It's a dangerous world out there. Yeah, well, I'll take my chances. Okay. You'll be sorry. I already am. is not just another Monday night of watching TV. Tomorrow, a two-hour music event from Fox and MTV that will reach an estimated half a billion people throughout 70 countries in the world. It's a concert for life starring Elton John, Guns N' Roses, George Michael, U2, Def Leppard, members of Queen, and more. You'll see him in concert on stage, and we'll talk to him backstage tomorrow night here on Fox. Now, stay tuned for Stand By Your Man.